the question is this that why we do reticulocyte count so the we evaluate the reticulocytes on the peripheral blood basically for three purposes three reasons what are those three purposes purpose number 1 a we want to know about the rbc erythropoiesis activity the rbc production activity in the bone marrow without doing bone marrow because this test is done on peripheral blood but without doing bone marrow without doing complicated more complicated more painful more invasive procedure like bone marrow evaluation we are getting an rough idea indirect idea about the rbc production activity in the on the peripheral blood through this test reticulocyte test that is the purpose number 1 purpose number 2 is that through reticulocyte count we can primarily have an idea about the type or categorization of the anemia what do i mean by that well in some forms of anemia you will be seeing that the basic cause of anemia is due to some defect in the production of rbcs in the bone marrow bone marrow is the factory where the rbcs are basically produced and later they come in the form of reticulocyte and the reticulocytes then mature into mature rbc on the peripheral blood so if your production some forms of the anemia would be due to production problem and some form of the anemia would be that rbcs are coming on the peripheral blood and they are getting dis- destroyed increasingly there is a increased destruction so if you want to categorize the anemias into these two boxes or groups that is the anemia is due to some problem in the bone marrow manufacturing or is there a problem due to increased destruction on the peripheral blood in this categorization reticulocyte count can help you how because if your bone marrow production is not healthy bone marrow is not producing rbc properly then what would happen your reticulocyte count would be low there would be reticulocytopenia for example in iron deficiency anemia for example in megaloblastic anemia in all these cases there is a nutritional deficiency of iron or uh, folate or vitamin b12 so the the production of rbcs are impaired in the bone marrow or in case of aplastic anemia where there is basically some form of hit to the hematopoietic stem cells so in this case what you will be getting that there will be reticulocytic anemia reticulocytopenia pure red cell aplasia would be reticulocytopenia because there is a problem in the production of the rbc in the bone marrow but in some forms of anemia where there is production is okay production is healthy manufacturing is healthy but as the rbcs are coming to the peripheral blood they are getting increasingly destroyed this group we usually call hemolytic anemia so in this group hemolytic anemia what would be seen that now there is anemia but the reticulocyte count would be high why because as the bone marrow gets the news that more and more number of rbcs are getting destroyed in the peripheral blood so they would try to ramp up or increase the production of the rbc in the bone marrow and that's that's why there would be result in the uh, increased reticulocyte because you know reticulocyte is basically nothing but the uh, penultimate stage before the final mature rbc when they have lost their nucleus so that stage is called reticulocyte and reticulocyte usually spend two days in the bone marrow and the last day one day in the peripheral blood before they become mature rbcs so here actually through looking at the reticulocyte you basically get an idea that what kind of anemia is this is it a proliferative hypoproliferative anemia where there is a problem in the production in the bone marrow or there is a increased destruction on the peripheral blood this categorization is possible third thing is that that you can also evaluate post treatment therapy in certain types of anemias like iron deficiency anemia uh, vitamin b12 or folate deficiency related anemia you can do a follow up after the treatment by measuring the reticulocyte that is the response okay adequate or not so altogether in a nutshell there are three basic purposes which are served by reticulocyte count or reticulocyte evaluation reticulocyte count there are many other aspects which we are be discussing in a different plat- different session correct reticulocyte count reticulocyte proliferation index so that things are there but the basic concept that you need to understand that why we do reticulocyte count for three purposes one we get an indirect estimation of the bone marrow erythropoiesis bone marrow rbc production without doing bone marrow because this test is done on peripheral blood second it helps to categorize the type of anemia is the problem in the production of anemia rbc in the bone marrow or there is increased destruction 
on the peripheral blood and third is that it also helps in follow up or treatment in certain anemias like identification anemia thank you